G'day, welcome to Star Portraits. We've come to the newly built Hampstead Theatre in North London. This theatre won an award from the Royal Institute of British Architects when it was opened in 2003. Our sitter, who is well known as a television actor, has worked here both as an actor and a director. And I think you'll make a wonderful portrait. Our sitter had a career change when he joined RADA at the age of 27 to become an actor. But it wasn't until he was in his mid-50s that he touched millions with a television role that was written specially for him. Well, I'll tell you exactly what the problem is, Mr Sturgeon. I was out the back working in the garden when he arrived, so I asked him if, for the time being, he'd put it in the downstairs toilet for me. And you know what he's done? He's only planted it in the... <laughs> <laughs> Classic series. It is, of course, Richard Wilson. How are you, Richard? We're all fine, very well. How are you doing? I'm, I'm very fit and well. Good. I can't wait to see this because you've got such an expressive face. Tell me, what was your reason for agreeing to have your portrait painted? Well, I mean, I could say it's nice, the idea of getting a portrait, which uh, yeah. I haven't had done for a very long while. I don't know, I suppose it's rather fascinating to see how others see you. A bit frightening as well, I have to say. Yeah. What, what sort of a portrait are you hoping to go away with at the end of all this? Oh, flattering. <laughs> Let's go and do it then. Okay. Three distinctly different artists are going to create Richard's portrait. Richard Brazier has a studio in a converted school in Battersea in London. He paints in oils and gets around 10 commissions a year. He's painted Lord Wakeham, musician Mark Eitzel, and writer Hanif Qureshi. Claire Shenston lives in a wonderful purpose-built artist's studio in West London. She graduated from the Royal College of Art where the acclaimed artist Francis Bacon came to see her work. He was impressed and bought one of the pieces. They became friends and Claire made over 50 studies of him, including this portrait, which is held at the National Portrait Gallery. Our third artist, Charlie Wells, lives in Spitalfields in London. He gave up his job as an architect in 1991 to pursue his dream of becoming an artist. Charlie uses computers for his work and his portraits are hand-drawn directly onto a laptop before being transferred onto canvas. The results are clean, bold and vivid. How different are they? And what are they going to make of our sitter's famously expressive face? And remember, They've got no idea yet who it is they're going to paint. Claire, Charlie, Richard, looking forward to it? Yeah. Yes, very yeah. much. And we're all pretty scared, though. <laughs> <laughs> Terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a little bit about our sitter. He lives locally, but he was born in Scotland. He's received BAFTAs for his television work. And in 1994, he was awarded an OBE. But I think he's best known for playing a melancholy, miserable old grump in a television series that ran for 10 years. Any suggestions? I'm trying, trying to think. We thought it was a woman, and now it's, it's a uh, he. Well, like a sort of vague in inkling for Michael Gambon, very rough guess. Mm. No. I know who it is. It must be the character Victor Meldrew. <laughs> Shall I go and get oh. him? Oh. It's the guy, it's the guy who does um, One Foot in the Grave. Oh, wonderful. wonderful oh, how wonderful. Well, here he is, and he is, of course, oh. Richard Wilson. Hello. Oh. Can I introduce you? This is another Richard. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hello, Richard. Hi. This is our how lovely Claire. Doing? Hello, Claire. Lovely to meet you. Richard. And Charlie. Hi, very Charlie. Nice to meet Hi. you. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. We've got a really nice uh, 50 <laughs> set, but you will be seated on the chair with this marvellous muted reds of the seating. So I am I back you. to the audience? Well, there's no audience in at the oh, moment, right. so... And you're not selling tickets? No. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> OK, time to get the show on the road. Richard Brage is going to be painting on a pre-primed white linen canvas. Claire works intuitively and hasn't yet decided on her approach. And Charlie has no canvas or paints. He's brought along his laptop. 
Do you work straight onto that? Yep, the, the computer's my canvas. I use a program called Photoshop that lets me use my finger as a pencil. <sighs> That's always scared me. Can I try it later? You certainly can. Good. I can't wait to see it. You OK, Richard? Yep. OK, everybody, let's get started. Claire's finally made a decision on her approach, and it's a dramatic one. White on black. OK, here are the rules. The artists have just five hours in this session to capture Richard, and then they have two weeks in their own studios to work from photographs which they can take of Richard later. Richard isn't allowed to see any of the portraits until the artists have completely finished. Then he gets to choose his favourite, which he's allowed to keep. Sounds good? Sounds very good. Normally, I'm, I wouldn't have my back to the auditorium. Although there's nothing wrong with a good bit of back acting from time to time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm quite glad we've got your front. <laughs> Makes it more interesting. I reckon our three artists are delighted that their sitter has such a fascinating face. Older people generally just have much more to give in their faces. Younger people are fairly smooth and uncharacterised and often it's not that interesting to paint and you'd rather paint someone who has a lived-in, sort of experienced look in their face. I quite often like painting things which are quite melancholy and obviously a lot of people want portraits and they don't want to look sad, they don't want to look depressed, so obviously sometimes you have to compromise between what you want and what they want. When I first started doing portraits, I wanted to use vase brush strokes. I mean, I used to paint a lot bigger. As I've carried on, I've become more defined. So Richard, are you a particular art collector yourself? Uh, yes, I buy uh, living Scottish painters. And is this um, because uh, you like their art, or is it as a duty to only buy Scottish? Well, I, I, first of all, I think I've got a duty to buy living painters. Mm. As a director, I only direct new writing. Mm. And I think we should all stick together. But I don't necessarily buy famous or anything like that. Just what takes my eye. Richard Wilson collects work by Scottish artists, including Alexandra Gardner, Alison Watt and Anne Oram. I wonder what sort of portrait he's looking for to add to his collection. Richard, what do you look for in a good painting? Well, I remember making a great breakthrough in looking at paintings when my friends who were at art school said to me, you're trying too hard to find something. You should just let it wash over you. You should just let it do what it does. Do you enjoy colour? Yeah. And what about sculpture, Richard? Yes, I like a sculpture. I've got a couple of um, sculpts, sculpts by Scottish sculptors <laughs> at home. Um, Rolf, would it be all right if I moved round and had a look at? Oh, I would think so. Well, okay, from a different okay. if you're scrutinised from anywhere. Scrutinised. <laughs> Scrutinised. Just from do anywhere. a bit of yeah, sketching do it, do it. from yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, lovely. This is the first. How's it working, Claire? It's extremely useful to be seeing Richard from this angle because I can see all sorts of answers to structural questions that I wasn't sure about seeing him from one angle. Wow. Do you see a different person, Claire? I don't see a different person, Richard, but I do see a whole different structure. I've got lots of linking shapes from mm. the side and I can start to plan possibly a composition. Right. Claire produces many, many drawings of her sitters. She likes to explore internal emotions as well as the external aspects of a face. And because of this, she often produces more than one finished portrait. I like the feeling that there are three aspects of somebody rather than just one. I can't produce a single image of someone anyway. To me, it's just not, not a satisfactory statement about the hugeness of any one person. So at least a triptych allows 
three aspects as opposed to one. There are already marked differences appearing between the three different styles. Richard's painterly approach there with the beiges and flesh tones and Claire's stark face appearing out of the black. And then moving over to Charlie's simplicity of line on the computer. So Richard, I guess you're, you're normally a bit more active when you're on the stage. Um, yes. And do you prefer acting to directing or...? I prefer to do both. I like, uh, I like changing hats. Yeah. And how would you describe your, your directing style? You, uh... I'd like to think I'm a minimalist. A minimalist, yeah. Yeah. A good piece of direction, you shouldn't notice it. And, and you shouldn't feel that the actors are acting. The capital A. So, Richard, mm -hmm. I wondered if, if one of the portraits was sufficiently minimalist that it would be able to be hung in, in your house. <laughs> well, are you suggesting that you might be a minimalist too? I, I, yes, it's um, quite stripped down, yeah. Well, in that case, you stand a very good chance of um, being plucked out of the <laughs> three. <laughs> For Charlie, his computer is a drawing instrument as valid as any pencil or paintbrush. The nice thing about a laptop is it has this trackpad and there's something very funny about moving your finger here and watching the cursor doing pretty much the same thing on the screen. It's like the paint is coming straight out of the end of your finger. What I do is construct the face but by drawing every single feature on a separate layer. So it allows for making those adjustments that, that all portraits require. A marked contrast to Charlie's earlier work, large, wild, abstract pieces. I had no idea at the time who inspired him. I mean, most people I talk to have a mental picture of <laughs> Rolf Harris doing these enormous <laughs> things where he'd sort of start at one end of the wall and sort of whistle and make funny noises and sort of do this, that, and, and eventually get to the other end of the wall and then sort of come back again and put in a different colour. And I think that's, it sinks in for a child who then ends up doing quite big paintings. That, that has to be something from which you learn. Right, back to the present. Would now be a good time for me to have a try at this? Yeah, sure, I'll open sure. the screen for you. Good luck. <laughs> it better not be better than mine. <laughs> I'll take that back and I'll push that down a bit. I think you've done this before. No, I haven't. It's, uh, it, I'm finding it most enjoyable. You're a natural. <laughs> it's not bad for a first time. Oh, I can't get his head that goes right up there somewhere and across to there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm getting so lost. I'm impressed. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Um, sort of three years. It took probably a year just to get used to, to using the, the trackpad to draw with. I'm having fun, but it scares me. I'll let you get back oh, to yours. Just... You going to save that? Yep, definitely. <laughs> Listen, we're almost halfway through. Shall we have a break now? Oh, Lovely. Yes. Yeah? yes. Good. So, Richard, how are you enjoying being studied so closely by the three artists? Well, it's very frustrating not to be able to see what they're doing. Do you find that there is any sort of uh, correlation between you as an actor and, and them as artists because they spend a lot of time studying people and yes. I guess you do too as, a, as an actor. Of course. I, and I, when I was introduced to them, I noticed that they were very beady. Uh, straight away they were <laughs> watching you. <laughs> were looking, uh, yeah. which is interesting. But, I mean, that's one of the great things about being an actor is observing people as well. That's how our stock and trade. When did you first get the feeling that you had to become an actor? Oh, well, I thought I wanted to become an actor when I was at school, but I didn't say that to people because living in a small Scottish town in the 50s, you didn't go around saying, I'm going to be an actor. They would really punch you in the mouth for saying yeah, that. It yeah, would be sure. silly. So I kept it sort of secret, I suppose, but it was always there. So it took me till I was 27 before I went to drama school. The highs of acting are extraordinarily high and the lows are desperately low. It's an extraordinary <laughs> profession. Do you think the theatre has another purpose other than just providing entertainment? Oh yes, I think the, the theatre is a great educator. 
The reason I do new writing, I suppose, is because I believe that writers should be writing about our society. I believe that we should do more new plays and less old ones. Well, shall we get back in there and do some more? Yes, I expect they're dying to get me back there. Lead on. OK, folks, Richard's back, in back position. reporting for duty. <laughs> Shall we get on with it? Yep. Yep. The artists have only two hours left in today's sitting to paint Richard. After that, they'll have a couple of weeks in their studios to finish their portraits. It's fascinating watching this. You're using the back side of your brush to draw the black lines on the white. Yes, I'm, I'm digging into the paint and I use this. I use the pointed end and the blunt end. I use whatever I've got. I love the way it just gradually seeps out of the blackness like somebody coming from the mist and <laughs> walking towards you. Yes. Just coming into some light and you go, ooh. I love texture. I mean, paint, colour and texture are all mm. intimately bound. Oi, that's good. It's pretty basic. I'm actually pretty happy with the profile I've got. When I did the proper picture to maybe get him slightly more on, I find it, it's, it's very, more straight very on. angular. I, I just slightly, slightly more facing on would be good. You can so, sort that out when you take yeah. the camera shots, eh? Yeah. Uh, lovely light on the lip, that bottom lip. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's pretty important. I think it's one yeah. of its main characteristics. What will you do when you get this home? Will you possibly I, do another picture? I will start again. I, I don't think this is, the right, this, is, this is the wrong size canvas. I think a lot of artists do it. The first day is a learning process and most stuff I do get scrapped because it it's, um, doesn't work. So Can't wait to see the end one then. Yeah. Well, our sitting is almost over. Charlie's steaming ahead on his computer. Richard's made a great start but says he's going to start again. Claire has made a couple of studies from different positions, but I still don't know which direction she's going to go in. It's all to play for. OK, artist, do you want to get some photographs of our sitter? Oh, yes. Yeah. OK, Richard and Claire, brushes down. Charlie, fold oh, your index well. finger away. Oh, dear. Work is over for today. has passed since the sitting and we've come to Battersea to Richard Brazier's studio. Let's see how he's getting on with his portrait. I didn't feel that I could capture Richard's particular characteristics that well from the view that I had and as always when a painting goes badly uh, I scraped it off. The main painting that I'm doing now is from a different angle. I, I felt the most important part of his face to get first was the, the jaw, the mouth. He's got a wonderful almost pursed look on his lips, as if he's sort of holding back on something and not sort of uh, saying whatever he wants to say. Ideally, I'd like to get some hands in and uh, really try and capture his... because his, his arms are crossed and I'd really like to get that and really get that, that look of sort of sullenness which has come across in this painting. It's unusual to be working with such a strict deadline and I generally tend to prefer painting from daylight, but I will be working pretty much night and day for the next week, so I won't be sleeping very much. Gee, poor old Richard. Over in West London at Claire's studio, things are completely different. She's been working incessantly since the sitting, producing loads of drawings and even some oil paintings. And I'm delighted she's considering doing a triptych of Richard. Unlike doing a single image where you're thinking, well, do I want him to look directly out in a confrontational way or do I want to make a study of him where he's looking away? In a triptych, you want both. Triptychs were originally created as altarpieces. But over the years, artists have been using the triptych to express themselves in different ways. Francis Bacon, for example, loved them. He could explore different aspects of the sitter and of his own work. The central image here that I love is a wonderful linking image because he's looking at himself. But in the panel that he's glancing towards, he's looking in a confrontational way at you. On the other side, he's taking you out of the triptych. So 
It's a very nice way to link the images. To achieve her goal, Claire's been really industrious and turned six of her drawings into oil paintings. Her dilemma now is to decide on the three to put into the finished triptych to present to Richard. Charlie Wells has been working at his East London studio, near the old Spitalfields market. A good portrait really begins with a rapport between the sitter and the artist, and that engagement, that contact, that spark, is the thing that should give the portrait, it, it, give it its life. And I spent four or five hours studying his face, so the drawing I did on the day is a study, and I think what, that Claire and Richard also effectively did study, so when we all sort of go, oh, we're going to throw our drawing away and start again, we're not throwing anything away, really, or starting again, really. Charlie's also chosen to rework his portrait using one of his photographs. I've done a drawing which I think is slightly different from my normal drawings, but I'm, I'm really happy with it. I think you might like Claire's work, that, that she did that white face emerging off a black background. I think you might like that because it's got painterly and it's a bit dark and a bit sort of weird. Um, on the other hand, he said he liked minimalism, a more pared down, black and white, stripped back approach. So that would be me. Well, the portraits are all completed and we've come to Sloan Square in London to show them to Richard, to the Royal Court, a theatre dedicated to promoting the work of emerging playwrights. The paintings are set up on stage and I'm eager to meet up with the artists before Richard arrives. G'day everyone. Hi. Hi. Charlie, Hi. Claire, Richard. How are you all feeling about the work you've created downstairs? Quite Nervous <laughs> now, I think. <laughs> Nervous? Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to see that, what they've done, actually. No. Can't wait. Okay. Can't wait. Disappointed. Yeah. Run out of time. I, uh, I just, I'm a slow painter and I just, uh, this is not finished. And really? Well, you know what that means. It's probably brilliant. No, it's, it's pretty bad. Any sleepless nights? I haven't slept in about two days. One doesn't normally have this kind of deadline. How long do you normally take on a painting? About two years. Wow. I wonder what Richard's going to make of the portraits. Richard Brazier's precise work captures an expression that, for many, defines our sitter. Claire's dramatic triptych explores three different aspects of Richard's face, while Charlie's portrait utilises bold, simple lines with slices of colour. Which one do you think Richard will choose? Richard, hello. Rolf, hello, how are you? Very good. Good. Uh, I hope you're looking forward to this. The paintings are very different, and whether one's going to jump out and grab you or whether you're going to be faced with a really difficult decision, right. I don't know. Are you looking forward to it? No. No? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit frightened. Well, let's go and see them and see okay. what you think then. I'm going to show you the portraits one by one. Yes. And then I'll bring the artist back in to hear your views. Are you ready to play the art critic? Well, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit frightening. Here we go. One, two, three, hop! Oh. I recognise the raised eyebrow. It's very <laughs> characteristic of I think I do quite you. a lot. Yes, you do. <laughs> you do. It's not at all frightening. I suppose the thing, as each painting is revealed, that you are worried that they're going to see something in you that you... You'd rather not reveal. You'd rather not reveal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> I would say it was, it was quite honest. It's got all the dangly bits. Would you like to go closer? Have a yes, I would. I'd just like to see what the... Of course, I did wear blue to, for the eyes, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> The mouth shape is very good. My mouth was never my best feature, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think I'm going back again. Uh, <laughs> I think... Yes. Shall we look at the next one? Ah, yes, I think so. This is uh, something we've never had on this series before. Oh. A triptych. A triptych. <laughs> Well, yes, that's... Once again, very recognisable of the raised eyebrow on the... Absolutely. On the central one, particularly. Yes, I think the eyebrow is raised in all of them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. looks rather, rather slightly startled there, rather severe. 
It's very good work. Particularly fine work in the eyes and the yeah. ears. And... Very lucky to be painted by such talent. Yeah. Okay, this is another first for the series, but in a completely different way. Right. A one, two, three, hop. <laughs> is that a happy laugh? Uh, oh yes, well, yes. Not so many warts and all bits in this one. <laughs> no, could be a bit younger chap there. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting the way they... The slabs of colour, yeah. The slabs really, of really colour. Really strong, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I think I know whose this is. Well, you should do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's a raised eyebrow again, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have to watch that. Get some uh, physiotherapy. It's going to be some uh, decision for you, isn't it, this one? Of course. How long do I get? Well, as long as you want, as long as it's very soon. <laughs> <laughs> In just a few minutes, I'll be returning with the artists for Richard's decision. Here we are, Richard, Claire, Richard and Charlie. Just stand by your portraits, please. I think they're all wonderful after having had a good look at them. Uh, Richard, this is um, just for a second before I put my glasses on, I thought, well, that could be computer generated because it's so accurate in so many ways. Um, and it, it is startlingly like me, I have to say. And Claire's is uh, extraordinary. I have three very startling uh, images. Um, maybe the most truthful in a way in terms of the aging process. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, wonderful. And the great thing about Charlie's, of course, is that I look so much younger. Uh, but I recognize myself again. Very good. I mean, I'd be thrilled to have any of them, I have to say. Decisions, decisions. Well, I think the one that I could live with most, and it's a very, 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 very hard decision, is Richard's. Mm. Mm. Well, oh, thanks, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> so Richard Brazier's anxiety was unnecessary. Which one would you have chosen? Wow, what a tough call. Three fascinating works, but Richard went for the portrait that he could best live with. I wouldn't have liked to have had to make that choice. See you next time. I liked his angle, which was to do with, with age and how each artist had um, sort of taken a different view, as it were. And uh, he's very wisely settled on, on the truest. My work is very demanding and demands a lot of the sitter to suddenly confront themselves in a totally different interpretation. So I'm not surprised Richard chose Richard's painting. I find it terribly difficult if I had to look at myself and, and pass judgment when it came to a painting, but um, he obviously saw some things which he can pick up on and I'm, and I'm glad that he could and he wasn't too traumatised by it.